What's up guys? It's your girl Paula Houston here. I am so excited to be live on Hairbrain. Thank you so much for having me. Um, today we are going to be playing with all things curly hair, which is one of my personal favorites, as you can see, probably understand why. Um, we're going to talk about three te techniques that I use in the salon um, every single day when I'm playing with my curly haired guests. Uh, we're going to do like a light kind of lightener application, a medium to moderate application um, for that guest that wants a little bit more bang with their blonde. And then the guest that wants that like kapow platinum i'm going to show you guys how to achieve that in a way that helps you to not only have the beautiful blonde but also maintain the integrity of the curls which is huge um so here in los angeles california we're in my salon salon mix um I have a lot of curly haired guests that have that ringlety texture. Um, I do have a lot of guests that have more of that like Afro texture as well, but it doesn't matter what your curl pattern is. People want to be blonde in Southern California. It's all over the world actually. But um, so these techniques are going to be super helpful. It's going to keep you super efficient. Um, we're also going to talk about toning. That's like one of the biggest challenges that I think we have a lot when we're playing with blondes. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about some of my favorite products, my favorite formulas. And then also if we have time, um, I'm going to show you guys a little bit of how to finish curly hair um, specifically diffusing some of my favorite products to use um, and how we can create that so let's go ahead and get started um, so I'm actually super excited to play with these mannequins. Um, this is a pivot point. This is Amber. Um, one of the things I really love about her is her texture is super, super soft and it really mimics like a natural curly haired texture. Um, so you can see here, I'm going to focus and we'll come back and we'll back, come back to this pre done Amber. Um, but this is the first technique, um, that I've created for you guys. It's really like a zigzag highlight pattern. Um, and it's something that I use quite a bit in the salon. Um, it's that perfect application for the curly haired guest that wants just a little bit of a sun kiss, a little bit um, to see some of the pops of lightness, but don't necessarily want a whole head of blonde hair. Um, so it essentially, um, and I'll turn her a little bit and you can see what's happening, but um, essentially what I do is I create three almost like headbands um, or halos that go across the top of the head. And then we create a zigzag placement throughout each of those as we work from the front of the head to the back. Um, so if we can come right on over here. I feel like Vanna White here. <laughs> um, so this is what the actual application itself looks like. And I'm gonna, um, I left half of it out so you guys can see what's happening. Um, but as you look here in the foils, so we first start with like a diagonal back, then it goes diagonal forward, then diagonal back, diagonal forward. So like a zigzag, it's always connected as it goes through. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and jump in to my application here. And Randy here behind the camera. If you have questions for Paula, <laughs> um, you know, I'm happy to pass those on just to put them in the comments and I'll, uh, verbalize those for you. I'm so glad you're here, Randy. Uh, I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> All right, so the first thing um, I'm actually mixing up, this is dual purpose lightener and 10 volume developer. Um, your volume of developer is really, really key um, with any texture, but especially with curly hair. And there's a couple of reasons for that that I'm gonna explain to you um, as we go through. So the first reason is um, the biggest thing with curly hair and maintaining the integrity of it is elasticity. Um, so that's hair's ability really to like bend and stretch. Um, and I'll take a little bit more developer when you get a chance to end. Thank you. Um, so it's the hair's ability to really like stretch and retract, which is what curly hair does. That's why we love it, right? Because it always has like the boing um, and the bounce. So when you're processing or when you're using lightener on the hair, um, you want to be really conscious of that elasticity. So using a lower volume of developer is really, really important um, because it gives you, oh, thank you. Um, because it gives you um, just a little bit more integrity long term in the hair. So 10 volume will get you there. It'll get you those levels of lift. Um, you just have to be a little bit more patient and a little bit more meticulous in your application. Um, I think as hairdressers, like we always just want to like wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, and be done with it. Um, but actually um, playing with that is, is going to be really key in Before the success. Before you start explaining your question, yeah. uh, your, um, sectioning, yes. I just wanted to pass on a couple of questions because the questions oh. are going to start oh. pouring in. <laughs> Give them to um, me. <laughs> okay. So the, the first is from Harris, Jack. Um, just asking hey, if, Harris, you, Jack. if you'll be, um, explaining, uh, dressing curly hair at any point. 
Yes, actually I will. Thank you so much. Um, thanks for joining and for your question. Yes, I'm going to be talking about um, styling curly hair probably towards the end of this. So we're going to do color. We'll talk a little bit about formulation and then at the very end um, we're going to talk about styling. We'll do primarily probably focusing on diffusing. Um, I can talk a little bit about like if you want to do like a two strand twist or stretching out curly hair, maybe we can make that happen or maybe that's another live, Randy. Add <laughs> to the list. Yeah, yeah <laughs> um, definitely, definitely. Yeah. We'll have so, to do a, a purely styling right that could be really fun um, we have a question from rich uh, hey rich met suitcase okay um he's asking will this translate the same if the hair were to be smooth straight or is this strictly for people who so i would say like 90 percent of my guests wear their hair curly all the time um it's just part of like they focus on wearing their natural texture um so you're gonna have more ease with um the end result of like if it's always curly, you can smooth it. It's just going to be, you're going to see more of those like, um, like strands and bands of color. So it'll be a little bit more of a bold placement if they were to wear it smooth. Um, the cool thing about curly hair is it naturally actually diffuses. Um, and so the texture itself or the coils diffuse the color. So you really get, um, that natural diffusion that we would normally have to create with, um, like weaves or smaller sections so this, of hair. This first section is that, um, how does that relate to where she parts her hair? Yep, so it actually, um, it's not super relevant. Like the zigzag is consistent, but what's cool about it is that it um, gives her the ability to to expose color depending on where she parts. Okay. So if she parts in the center, like or this is gonna, I right, guess, yeah. yeah. So if she parts in the center, this will act like a little bit of a veil. So it'll kind of camouflage some of the lightness. Whereas if she wants to part here, I'm putting a slice right here. So she's gonna have a strong, bold placement of color right there. Cool. So I'm showing you guys this um, just like visually to show you how it connects to the top. But ideally what I would do is I would work um, from the hairline to the center, then from the hairline to the center. So just to, again, give you a visual on to, to continue that zigzag, here's where we go. But I'm actually gonna come over here and show you what that zigzag placement actually looks like. So my first section is I pick up that hairline. I'm gonna go ahead and just take a little zigzag, clip that away. I'm gonna slice off that diagonal back section so what's cool about this is it's all slices, um, and so it can make you super efficient behind the chair. Um, but those those sl that slice technique is like you just answered Sarah's question. Oh, <laughs> what was Sarah's question? Hi, Sarah. Are they slices. Yes, they are slices. <laughs> so it's going to be all slicing, um, and you guys will see just a second as I um, continue the next section. You'll be able to see what my next we have a question from christopher hey He's christopher asking, do you find that bond builders help to maintain curly hair's curl pattern and integrity better even when formulating low and slow with your developer i love that question so much and this is a conversation that i actually feel super passionately about um i do i know that people use a lot of bond builders and i'll be honest with you like the best bond builder is a good consultation mm. Um, so when you have that consultation conversation with your guests and you can actually start to determine what the hair is capable of, you don't necessarily need an additive in your color. Now, do people love to use it? Do you want a little bit of insurance? Absolutely. There are like so many possibilities. Um, and in some cases you may have a guest that has really compromised hair. And in that case, a bond builder can give you a really beautiful end result. Um, but in this situation, your consultation with your curly haired guest is going to be your best um, maintenance of the integrity of their hair. So you can see here, so we've got diagonal back, diagonal forward. So my next one is going to be the slice that goes diagonal back. So to continue that bond builder conversation, um, I would say with that consultation, again, using lower volume developer, I'm using a dual purpose, this is Paul Mitchell dual purpose lightener and 10 volume. So using that lower volume of developer helps me to maintain the elasticity of the hair. So I don't have to worry about compromising the integrity because I've had a conversation with my guests, I've had a thorough consultation, um, and I know what the hair can do, and I'm willing to be patient, take small sections, be meticulous in my application, so I don't necessarily need the insurance. Now, if I had a guest that was having challenges, sorry, I know my hand's right in front of you. Um, if I had a guest that had maybe a little bit compromised hair, then I would look to a bond builder. But in this case with Amber, <laughs> um, she has virgin hair. She's never colored it before. I'm using, you know, dual purpose lightener, 10 volume developer. In some cases I'll bump up to 20, but generally speaking, I'll always use a lower volume of developer. Um, we have lots of questions coming in about uh, the foil. Okay. Um, of course. What brand Everybody is it wants to ask. Yeah. So these are the Framar 
um, the silver embossed pre-cut foils. They are honestly, like, they're my favorite foils. Um, Framar, if you're listening, send me all your silver boss foils. Um, <laughs> so mm -hmm. they, um, I like them because the weight is really amazing. You can see like how just easy and like secure they are. Um, it's really cool, especially when you're working with curly hair, because the texture has a tendency to get a little bit crazy um, and just like really puffy. So having a little bit of weight to the foil helps to create a beautiful end result. A um, uh, question from Jasmine. Hey Jasmine. Uh, do you face frame with curly hair? Is this uh, slices or weaved? So this um, face frame as far as cutting or color, like for Jasmine's, uh, okay. Um, yeah, I totally can. Um, it just depends on my guest's desired end result. This is gonna give um, a really kind of diffuse sun-kissed result. Maybe Randy, let's, should we go back over and we can sure. look at the, for the new, new peeps? Yeah. Um, so this right here, this front section little, um, is kind of the first strap of the technique that I'm showing you guys. So this is the end result that you get from the application that I'm doing right now. So you can see that it's sun-kissed. There's a lot of her natural that's still popping through. So this is for that guest that's like looking to kind of tiptoe towards the lightness and brightness and doesn't necessarily want to like jump into the deep end. Um, so she wants to be able to see the color and you obviously need the slices in order for it to pop out of the texture. Um, but it also has like a softness to it and it's really diffused. And that's kind of the beauty of working with curly hair and slices is it's super easy um, to just pop in a few foils and get a really, really beautiful end result. Um, so that, I hope that answers your question. Okay. Jasmine, if you have more, give us, give us a shout out in the comments. Um, but I want to go back to the question about the bond builders and the consultation, because I do think it's super important. Um, the thing about consultations, can we just like make consultations sexy again? Like, can, yeah. <laughs> can we? Um, and I'll be honest with you guys, I have had once maybe twice in my career where i have like gotten a little overzealous and i've over processed hair and it's been broken and my guest is super upset with me or the model um and what would have really resolved that is a thorough consultation if i would have asked clear questions um generally speaking if i have a guest that's coming in for a major transformation i'm asking them for 10 years of color history um, especially if their hair is longer. Like, I want to know everything. I want to know um, when did you lighten it? When did you darken it? When did you go to the salon? Did you do it yourself? Have you ever had a relaxer? Any chemical services? Have you ever colored your hair before? Like, that's those are all important things to have a conversation with your guests about. If you just about. started a hashtag, Renee Miller just <laughs> said, make consultation sexy again. <laughs> Um, I'm going to add it to my, my Insta profile. Um, but seriously, and I think that's the thing is like hairdressers is like we feel invasive not having the, the conversation, but it's actually what's required in order to ensure success with your color service. You have to have those conversations. It's like, I feel like there's more intimacy working with your guests and your hairdresser than there is in certain other situations. So I'm just saying like, you need to be asking questions about who you're getting into bed with in the salon. And we were super clear about like what the expectations are and um, about what's actually possible with your guests. Cause those conversations will save you every single time. I've been there, I've burned off hair, which I'm terrified to admit, I'm sorry. I I'm sorry if you're watching, I, I apologize. I was young and stupid, it won't happen again. <laughs> Anyway, go ahead, Randy. <laughs> uh, Cynthia is asking, what brand is the lightener? That is amazing with no heat to get that much lift on a mannequin. Yeah, totally. Um, so it's actually dual purpose lightener and 10 volume. It's with Paul Mitchell. Um, it's my go-to lightener anytime I'm doing maximum amounts of lift. Um, sorry, I'm like ready to go on to the next thing. Yeah. Um, so it's my favorite thing to do when I'm playing with um, large amounts of lift. Dual purpose lightener gets me there every time up to seven levels of lift, which is amazing. The other thing too, um, who, who I don't know who asked that question. Question, but. Uh, Cynthia. Hi, Cynthia. Um, the other thing, Cynthia, to keep in mind, and everybody, is it's not just the product that you're using. Yes, dual purpose liner is amazing. It's my go-to, but it's also about your section size. It's about how meticulous you are with your saturation. Um, it's with like your patience with timing. Those are all things that are really important because 10 volume will get you there. It'll get you there a little bit slower than 40 volume, but it'll get you there with the hair still on the head and no guests mad at you. <laughs> are there more questions? Uh, they're coming good, in steadily. They're coming in. Okay, ahead. cool. It's a good time to... All right. So I want to show you the front again just to give you... Oh, yeah, sorry. You're like so good with Thanks. the camera. Um, I love this tripod, how it just mm. like the pivot point tripod's awesome. Um, so we have our sun kiss little zigzag um, formation, which makes me want to like snap in a Z formation. Mm. Um, but so this is our next technique. So this one is... Um, it's a heavier application. I'm going to show you guys what that technique looks like. Um, this is my favorite for the guest that wants more powerful blonde. Um, but also wants the ease and the low maintenance of um, having a little bit of their natural still in there. So 
I'm gonna show you all her secrets and we're gonna pull this back a little bit. So when you pull it back, um, it's a series of weaves and, and um, TZ lights. And you can see that it gives you a super, I don't know if you can see that yep. on camera, but it gives okay. you like a super soft transition from their natural into the lightness. So then the next section you can see is a weave. And then as I go through again, you'll see the TZ highlight, which again gives you a super soft transition. So this is for that guest that like wants to be light and bright, but maybe doesn't want to commit to coming back every four to six weeks, right? Like they don't want to constantly have the have to come in for a retouch. They need a little bit of length, maybe three months between their um, services, uh, between their color services. In between that, they're coming in for refinement and treatments and haircuts and all of those things, right? Frequency of visit is important. I learned that from my mentor, Robert Cromines. Um, so the frequency of visit comes, but as far as you having to do the blonding, you would only do it maybe Maybe every third visit instead of having to have them come back every um, single visit so we're gonna go ahead and shift gears let me find my little knob here and I'll turn so you can see what's going on so that is so we have our zigzag placement in that um, the placement that you just saw is this technique here so <clears throat> I always start um, at the hairline this is just how I remember um, I started the hairline with a um, a back comb section so this is a TZ and the reason for that is so that when the hair comes up they have like a really soft transition and it's not harsh so then as I continue to work up it's TZ then weave then TZ then weave then TZ then weave then TZ then weave and I work all the way up so my last section was a weave so this next section I'm gonna move this clip so there's not so many things in the way um, this next section is going to be the TZ section and she's a little wobbly so I think I didn't um. lock it in all the way there we go okay so let me just tip her a little. So my next section is gonna be a TZ highlight. So again, we're still taking slices. Um, in this case, she's her sections are back to back. If you wanted a little less of a bold end result, you could do, um, you could leave space in between sections. So you could do like a TZ section and then leave out a slice and then do a weave section, leave out a slice or any variation of that um, is gonna create a different end result. So just being You're getting super so clear. many thank yous for showing textured hair. Yay, of course, it's my favorite. Um, well, as you, I don't know if you guys could see me on camera, but I have curly hair and I had a lot of terrible experiences growing <laughs> up. So <laughs> it's actually one of the reasons that I became a hairdresser um, is because I had such terrible experiences. <laughs> and I was like, I need somebody, I gotta, gotta help all the young people. So that was a nice long stroke in a back comb. Yes, um, and thank you so much for that. For sure. He's like, bring it back, Paula. Um, so that's that's the thing with the TZ highlights is it's not a back comb. You're not doing an updo. Um, you're not like stacking and packing the hair for a bouffant. You're actually um, just creating a little bit of, think of it like a cushion um, to help diffuse. Cause then what happens, and I'll show, give you a visual in just a second. Um, this is dual purpose lightener in 10 volume. Again, I can use the same um, formula because it's going to give me the same amount of lift, but you can see how fine my section and is. you paint all the way into the back comb. So it's right up to, up to the, the, back the back comb. Yeah, okay. so I'm not actually You're in not the in back comb. Mm -mm. And I can give you a really good visual. I'm going to show you my hands. Yeah. I'm going to turn myself into a hand model here for a second once I pop this foil in. Um, but basically, oh, I don't know what happened there. There we go. Um, so basically what happens is when you, oh, my nails. Um, so when you back comb the hair, this hair comes up, right? So this is the hair that gets lightened. So this would be where the line of demarcation normally would sit. So as you comb out that back combing, that actually intermingles, it erases the line of demarcation. And then you see some of their natural coming in with the lightened pieces. So that's what gives you, that's the benefit of really going in and, um, doing that back comb piece because you just get a like a softer end result. Um, and again, remember that this is that guest. Let me do this weave and then we can go back to the pre-done and I'll show you again what the end result looks like. Um, so then for my next section, I'm gonna go ahead and weave. So this, instead of a slice, it's a softer leave out. Um, so you still get like some, you're gonna get more color than if, if you did a um, slice leave out. So again, I'm gonna come in this one. I'm coming like up to the edge, but not all the way down to the or to the root of the hair or the base of the hair. And you can see my section size is still pretty can um, consistently even and small, and that's really gonna help ensure that I get that maximum amount of lift. And again, like we, I think a lot of times get a little bit lazy with our foiling, but I um, was 
trained to believe that mediocrity is not an option. So we do not do mediocrity. Um, shout out to the lady Lucy Dowdy for that. So um, just again, to give you guys a visual here. So this is, this is actually, I sectioned that so beautifully. I'm gonna just give myself a shout out. Um, <laughs> so this is the, the um, weave section. So you can see like it's up to the base, but there's a little bit of rootiness. A lot of my blondes like the rootiness. If they didn't, I would go all the way to the base. And then this section is, um, you can see where the weave or the TZ came out and there's no line of demarcation, right? Can you see where it's just super soft and blended? And that gives my guests more longevity with their end results. So they don't necessarily have to come back to me and get lightened every single um, visit. In between their lightener visits, they're gonna come in, they may get like a toner, um, they may get a treatment, they may get a haircut. Okay, so same thing, I'm holding the bottom of the hair, I'm just gonna talk you through this teasy really quick. Um, so I'm holding the bottom of the hair and it's just like a slow, loose stroke. So you can see, I'm not like constantly back combing, I'm not really being super rough, I'm just going in like almost like the surface. comb this out, right, so you don't wanna pack it. Totally. Yep, exactly. I'm gonna comb it out, so I don't wanna like pack it in because then that's just gonna be that much harder for me to um, comb out in the wash house. Yeah, given that her hair is, is so curly, is, mm -hmm. it, is it a challenge to comb this out? It isn't, and in fact, I'll show you, um, how about if we do the last one, I'll do it with conditioner, and then I'll just like do a quick comb out for you guys so you can see what that would look like. All right, so then my next section, because I just did um, my tease, is gonna be a weave. So this is more at real-time speed now. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I would say... Your and nails then, and Lucy are getting shout-outs. <laughs> Thank you, my nails. You can... Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to shout-out my nail girl. Her, her Instagram is Azusa Barbie Nail. She's amazing. She collects Barbies. <laughs> she's okay. hysterical. Her whole like studio is pink <laughs> with Barbies everywhere. But she's like an amazing artist. Yeah. So you should check her out. Um, and yes, Lucy is amazing. She's actually like the re she discovered me. She was she's the reason that I am what I am today, that I'm here with you, Randy, on all right. and all of our friends on Hairband Live. Um, Dan, can I get another bowl of dual purpose lightener and 10 volume, please? Thank you. Okay. So again, that was a tease. As I get to those finer sections, perfect. Um, okay, we're gonna regroup really quick. I just have to mix, but I do need that color brush still. So this is, um, if you're interested in what I'm using, this is dual purpose lightener in 10 volume. Is, th is this typical of what you would do with mix as you go? Yep, or? 100%. So the reason why is you have to think about, um, like lightener is, it doesn't have energy. It has energy, but like I'm the energy behind it, right? So it'll get tired if it just sits in the bowl by itself for a long time. So I constantly am like remixing and just Diane is um, our rising star in the salon and she's constantly the one that's like um, running and remixing for me. Yeah. If I'm in the middle of a placement like this, it's nice, yes. It was, I didn't always have a, an assistant in the salon. So, um, so as I'm going through, I'm just gonna do a saturation. This is dual purpose lightener, 10 volume. You guys can see again, like using the 10 volume is really key because it's gonna help me maintain the integrity of my guest hair and create something that's really lifted. I can get those seven levels of lift using dual purpose lightener, but it also is gonna be a really gentle lift. So I get a nice um, even end result. And then, so my next is gonna be a tease. So I'm gonna hold that up. I don't know if you can see what's yep. happening. So I'm gonna hold that up. Again, it's just like a long stroke there. And I'm gonna do a tease after this as well. Just so I can so show you guys how to get rid of it. Often will do just a, yes um just in those last couple sections because again we're ta we're thinking about the transition and the end result and just letting it be super soft yep michelle is asking do you put them under heat i do not michelle so here's the thing um dual purpose liner will give me seven levels of lift which is awesome and then also um the other thing is when you put lightener under the heat a lot of times you lose control of like the processing um, so I know people will often do that. So again, I'm going to do my tease and I'm not going to put this one in a foil, but I'm just going to show you guys, um, how I would comb it out and then we'll put it in a foil. So, um, 
essentially what I'm doing is when the foils come out, so all the foils would come out, I would rinse here, but I try really hard not to get the base wet. Okay. Um, and that's super important because if you get the base wet, it'll start to really tangle. Um, you want to keep it kind of dry and fluffy. So what I would love to do is um, I'll go through, I'll rinse this, and then what I'm going to do is I'll pull out... Um, I'll pull out my 413 brush and I kind of just give it like a little bit instead of like brushing it I almost like kind of bounce the brush off and it releases you can see how I know she's using like one row of mm -hmm. the bristles too yeah just like the edge so I don't know if it's easier if I turn just sort of want to come on over from the side yeah. um, but I basically just go in and I'm not like pushing it down I'm just catching kind of the edge and like starting to loosen it up so then I can just give it like a quick brush through and it's ready to go um, so do yourself a favor. So again, to recap, you're, you're rinsing the, the foil out, yep. but trying to not get the back home section wet. Totally. Okay. So again, I'm going to show you guys that one more time for those of us that are just joining. Um, so I've gone in, I've backcombed my section, right? So that backcombing's away. So this gets put into the foil. Once it be, once it's my processing time, I don't know if it's better to give you show you guys like the total visual for people that are just popping in. So I'm gonna foil that, right? So once I'm done, this foil comes out. I'm gonna rinse off my dual purpose lightener in the wash house, just being really conscientious. And their head, remember her head's gonna be tipped back in the bowl anyway. So I'm not gonna, I, it's easier to not get any lightener here. Then I'm gonna go ahead with my, um, in some cases I'll, they'll stay laid down, in some cases I'll have them sit back up. And then I can just go in and like, kind of do a little tap tap at the base. And you can see already it starts to expand that, as long as it's not wet and then you can just comb right through. Cool. Yeah. Like, you know, it's interesting to me because I've, I've cut hair for 25 years, but not, you know, I've been around colorists, obviously, but what I've seen and realized that, it, that rinsing colors is much of an art and <laughs> science as <laughs> totally. uh, coloring hair. Yeah, and I think that's really, um, I love that, you're, that you started that conversation, Randy, because I think that so often we... You know, there's kind of like an old school or like salon reality mentality that you have to like do it all in the bowl. You have to tone in the bowl. You got to rinse them. You got to make this like super fast wham, bam, thank you, ma'am situation. But the reality is like there is as much like elegance in the rinsing and in the refinement of, of hair color as there is in the actual application. Like we get so excited about having beautiful foils and things like that. But you really want to take your time when you're rinsing. You want to take your time. Um, when you're actually refining the hair as well, which we're going to talk about in just a little bit. Um, cool. Do we have any other questions before we move on? Uh, no, we're good to move on. Yay! Okay. Oh, yeah. We do have one question from uh, Dady uh, Kine. Um, hey. How much time do you wait with 10 volume to lift for seven volume or seven levels, please? Yeah. So um, that's actually a really good question. So generally speaking, dual purpose lightener, um, it'll it'll time out at about 45 minutes. Um, so I would say generally speaking, depending on your section size, the te texture and density of the hair that you're working with, like 30 to 45 minutes, like you're gonna see a fair amount of lift. Now, if I'm doing seven levels of lift and maybe the hair's a level three and I'm trying to get it to a level 10, which I'll be honest, that's like pretty rare for me. Um, I do like maybe a color correction, not rare, but like maybe once a week as opposed to like, generally speaking, I'm looking to lift like maybe three levels or four levels. Um, so in which case 30 to 45 minutes is plenty of time. If I'm lifting from a level three to a level 10, then I may want to, um, I may want to like rinse and then reapply. Okay. So that's something to think about, especially when you're playing with curly hair, you're definitely going to want to look at um, in between those rinse and reapplication, you're going to want to do a treatment. You're going to want to make sure that you're really loving the hair and giving it some TLC to create a really beautiful end result. Okay, cool. So we've just shown you, this is the technique um, that I just showed you guys with the TZ and the weaves. And then we're gonna go ahead and move on. We've got this beautiful, let's get her situated here. Um, so this is our beautiful like golden blonde platinum. Like you can see that every strand is completely lightened. Um, and then it has, I'll show you her base. Um, so she's got her dark natural base still. And then we just foiled like going back to back. Now you have a couple of options. 
um, that I'll talk about when I'm showing you how to do the platinum, but this is every single hair on her head has been lifted. Um, if I wanted to have like platinum all the way base to ends, I would go through once this is lifted to about like a level seven or eight, um, I would go back in and apply the lightener, um, no higher than dual purpose lightener in 20 volume to the base until it lifts and matches. In between the foils at the base. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So I would keep it in the foil while it's in the foils and I'll show you guys what that looks like. Um, and then go in and pop in uh, your dual purpose lightener and 20 or synchro lift depending on your desired end result um, here at the base. But um, some guests like, like a Rudy look. So that's, it just really is going to depend on um, what they are looking for. Okay, so here is, um, this is, I pre-foiled um, some, most of her, um, this in this quadrant. So these are all uh, eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch section um, is really your option. And that's like the best opportunity when you're going through and um, doing a platinum card technique. Um, so the thing about, again, I talked a little bit about curly hair and section size. So um, your section size is really what's going to determine the lift. If your guest has virgin hair, no color history, and you are going in um, with dual purpose lightener and 20, you know, maybe 10, maybe 20 volume um, to get to that true platinum, you can get that end result. Um, but you have to keep your section size small and it has to be consistent. Um, so that's like, you can see, you can see all the way through to the bottom of the foil. That's how small my section size is. And then also you just want to make sure that your saturation is there. So again, I'm using dual purpose lightener and 10 volume in this situation. And again, I will be honest with you. I'm kind of a like sassy quick. I like to hurry up and just get it done in the salon. But in this case, like I will never rush a platinum card ever 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 i learned my lesson i totally compromised the integrity of a girl's hair once and i was like so felt so guilty so it just takes as long as it takes <laughs> yeah just be honest be honest be slow take your time madonna is asking do you pre-treat the curls that's a great question i generally don't pre-treat um so i just am really aware of what the guests like hair can take through the consultation mm -hmm. um sometimes instead of pre-treating i will do a test strand um and I don't have to split this, but I'm going to do it just to, um, I will do a test strand and then that can help to give me a better idea in the conversation or the consultation, right? Cause what's our hashtag make consultation sexy again. Mm -hmm. Um, so in the consultation with the guest, I can give them a little bit more, um, and of idea of an idea of what they can expect. The other thing too about the benefit of doing a test strand is you can actually show the guest, like, especially, um, if they have unrealistic expectations or they um, are telling you a story about what their hair history is <laughs> and you can expose it in that test strand and you can explain to them, this is what your hair will look like if you, if you try to move forward with this service, you know, or like push it further than your hair wants to go. I'm um, not sure that we can show Dady this, um, but um, the question is if you're going from level three to 10, how do you reapply lightener after washing the cheese sections? Uh, so if I were, if yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's actually a great question. Um, and let me clarify a little bit about what I was saying. If um, if they are doing a TZ, like if you're doing a TZ highlight, I'm gonna take my section size as small as if I were doing a platinum card. So if your target is to take them to a 10, but you wanna see some of their natural in there, um, just for my personal preference, like I don't love the high contrast of having a level three natural with a level 10 lightness. So I wouldn't, this would not for me be an ideal technique. Um, however, it can be like, if your guest wants that like dark Rudy end result um, with the lightness, then you, you can create this and it's awesome. Actually, my friend Mary um, Cuomo, I think she's done a Facebook Live with you guys. Mm -hmm. um, she created this really beautiful technique a while ago on a girl that had really coarse, dark hair. Um, and she created a really, really beautiful um, end result like this that looked platinum. Um, and she lifted her, but your section size is what's really key. So you just have to, it's possible, but you would just, I would, instead of reapplying, I would make your section size smaller so that you can get the lift you want in one section. Cool. And Thank if you. for some reason you open up the foil, and um, I'm like taking so long to answer this. If for some reason you open up the foil and it's not where you want it to be, instead of having to rinse and reapply, you can actually just resaturate with um, another fresh bowl of lightener. Because remember, lightener gets cool. tired. 
So after like 35, 45 minutes, you're going to want to reapply. Um, and I just teased that in that visual, but we're not supposed to tease. This yeah. is all platinum cards. So <laughs> that was just a visual for you, girl. I did it all for you. Um, so this again is a platinum card technique. So I'm going to make sure you can see all the way through the foil with that section. That's what's really, really important. And then Diane, can I get another fresh bowl, please? Um, so that's where you just really want to look at your saturation because that's ultimately what's going to get you the lift. I'm using dual purpose lightener and 10 volume developer. In some cases, if I feel like the hair is um, really coarse or more resistant, I may bump it up to 10 volume or 20 volume. Um, can you mix it for me? That'd be awesome, please. Thank you. Um, so I would bump it up, but I try to stick with 10 volume where I can, and then I can bump up from there um, just because I want to keep the hair. And let me actually show our friends here. I know I asked you to mix. Don't listen to me. Um, all right, so this is DPL dual purpose lightener from Paul Mitchell, 10 volume developer. Um, I love the consistency. It's going to give me like seven levels of lift. Sometimes if you're working with super curly hair, you may want to mix it a little looser. Um, that's also a possibility and something to just be really mindful of. Um, I have a question from Jenny about the tripod. Hi, Jenny. Um, where do you get the tripod? Um, I love it. So this is a, is that, is there more question? Or is that, yeah, no, that's where's it from? Yeah. <laughs> question mark. From um, cool. So this is, this um, is actually a pivot point tripod, um, which this is also a pivot point mannequin. If you're just joining us, um, this is the Amber curly haired mannequin. Um, what's super cool is, and this is like my favorite feature is you can actually pull down on this little lever right here. And then you can just like spin the mannequin instead of having to like pick up the whole tripod and move it around. Um, you just pop this out and you can move and then you just pop it right back into place there's a couple of other features that are really awesome but if you do a lot of um work on mannequins which like for those of us that are now i like got myself in trouble um so for those of us that do a lot of work on mannequins we um you know we do need to be able to oh did i i'm like oh look it's so easy now randy has to yeah. come save me yeah, that's right thanks randy um so when you're working on mannequins like you do want to have the ease of being able to like move it around and just you know adjust your sections because really we do want to look at making sure that we're honoring our bodies with the work that we're doing and the less we have to bend and fold and staple our bodies into weird positions to do hair the easier and longer our career is going to be okay so i'm going to pop in I've got two more foils this is a platinum card technique so it's the fully it's the full blonding technique um and I'm taking a quarter of an inch to an eighth of an inch sections. You just want to be able to see, you should be able to read a newspaper through those sections. And this is dual purpose lightener and 10 volume. It's palm, from Paul Mitchell. For those of you that are asking, these foils are from Framar. They're the silver embossed foils, the pre-cut. They're my favorite. I just think they look so great. They make everyone look like the most cleanest foiler of the, in the west or the east or anywhere in the world depending on where you're at i think framar is international so <laughs> they are perfect so even if you're in russia mm -hmm. or wherever france mexico these are all places i want to go so <laughs> i love it <laughs> Okay, cool. So that's my last section. Um, okay, so should we do a quick recap of the yeah. different techniques? Let's do it. All right, so first we have... Slightly brushed out now. Yeah, because she's been played with. Um, so first we have our zigzag highlight technique. Um, so I'm going to show you guys visually what this looks like as the end result. It's just this front section through here. So it's more of a sun-kissed highlight for those curly guests that are looking to kind of tiptoe into the lightness and brightness. Um, and it's a super quick, easy technique. That is this front section here. Whoop. Um, so essentially you're just creating a zigzag of foils all the way across the head shape. So this, they zig and zag and connect as you work through the head. And I those do, are slices. They are slices. Um, so they'll do, and we'll just move her here. Um, and then let me clip this away so you guys can see what's happening. Um, so this technique I love because essentially you just create three headbands or straps across the head and then you just zigzag completely as you work through and the whole the whole head ends up being this really beautiful kind of sun kiss. Sorry, Randy, I'm putting you through your paces okay. today. Um, this really beautiful sun kissed end result all over. 
All right, and then our second technique that we did today is um, this little bit here. Um, this is a more bold end result. It's a series of weaves um, and teasy highlights. So there's a little bit of slight back combing. It gives you a really soft end result. It's for that guest that wants a little bit of rootiness, doesn't necessarily want to commit to lightening their hair every three months, um, or sorry, every four to six weeks, but is looking for more like every second or third visit to go in with hi highlights. Um, this gives a really soft grow out. And if you want to kind of show them again, um, so this is this this is the weave. So this section right here was weaved. You can see there's a little bit of a base there. If your guest doesn't want any rootiness there, you can highlight all the way to the base. But um, my guest Amber today told me that she likes a little rootiness. Mm -hmm. And then the next section, this is the result of the TZ. So you can see here that we've got a super soft transition from the base, and that's a result of the TZ highlight. Um, that that hair that was back combed actually acts as like a diffuser um, to create a really really soft end result um speaking of diffusion should we talk a little bit about that yeah sure okay cool um and then i'm gonna have diane if you wouldn't mind wetting down this one quadrant and i can we can do a little diffusion demo diffusion demo say that five times fast <laughs> um but in the meantime i want to talk a little bit about toning blondes um because i think that's super important and we won't necessarily have time to talk about all of it today but let me make some space for you randy okay. um but what i did is um, I talked a little bit, or I just set this up for you guys. Um, Diane worked tirelessly yesterday to pre-lighten these swatches. Um, this is something that becomes really important um, to look at when you're actually coloring hair. So essentially what I've done is we've created level six, seven, eight, and nine swatches. What I'm gonna talk about, and um, I'm actually gonna color all of these and you guys will see an end result. So you can come to my page, um, it's Hair by Paula Houston um, on Instagram if you'd like to come visit me. Um, and we'll type it in the comments as well. But like this is, you can see that this hair, I don't know if you can see it if you get close, yeah. has like a little bit, it looks really light there, but a red orange base. Um, this is a level seven, so you're seeing a little bit more of that orange come through. This is a level eight, so you're seeing more of that yellow orange. And then here is a level nine, so you're seeing more of that yellow. There's still some gold in there. Um, but the thing that's important when you're going in and toning is to actually look at, yes, we talk about level, like I wanna pull a level seven from the shelf and put it on the hair, but you actually wanna look at the pigment, like what pigment is in the hair um, and what do you actually wanna keep? What do you want to um, get rid of or what do you wanna just completely obliterate, right? So those are the different things and that's how you start to create warm, cool or neutral end results. Um, and so what we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna um, do another little probably live about different formulations because I know we all love to talk about formulations um, we still have time today we'll have to do it another time um, but we'll talk a little bit about whether you would choose to use a translucent demi-permanent a more opaque demi-permanent or in some cases you may want to use permanent hair color in order to create your end result so um, we're going to talk about all that so you'll have to check back to my page follow me hair by Paula Houston I'm gonna have Diane pop it into the comments and we'll go from there okay so this is for our friend in the very beginning that asked um, to get a little bit of information about. So I'm gonna have you, Diane, if you would go in um, and just pop into the comments section. Um, I'm gonna show you guys quickly just how I um, will style curly hair. Um, I have a lot of favorite products. One of my favorite products right now is um, Paul Mitchell. This is NeuroLift. Um, it's really cool because it has thermal protectants in it, um, but then also it creates like the most amazing bounce in the hair. Um, and that's the thing with curly hair is like, you want all the bounciness and all the like, just coils and curls. So the thing that's super important is you wanna make sure that you're actually saturating every single curl. So again, I'm using Paul Mitchell Neuro Lift and Diane's gonna type that into the comments right now for you if you guys have any questions. Um, and I use a lot of product when I'm styling curly hair. I feel like one of the common misconceptions is people use too much product when they're styling it smooth and they don't use enough product when they're styling it curly. So you actually wanna kinda do the opposite because you wanna like, you, you need less, it takes less work I think to like really smooth and polish out a curly hair, um, haired guest than it does to like really coax those curls into beautiful ringlets or into a beautiful zigzag or whatever. Um, in that case, you're wanting to minimize the frizz and things like that. So you can see already like with the application of the product that I've created like a really nice separation. Um, so you wanna make sure that you are absolutely saturating all of that hair. And once you work it through, then, 
Um, these like are my two favorite products that I can't even live without or my two favorite tools. So um, this is the Neuro um, Halo, which is one of my favorite dryers. It has, um, it is not plugged in right now. Um, so it has like a couple of different possibilities in terms of, okay, hold on. We're just gonna move right over. Um, in terms of the different ways that you can play with it. Luckily we're in a salon. <laughs> just kidding, it's my salon. It's not just a salon. Um, so we, if you guys are just joining us, we're in Los Angeles, California. This is Salon Mix and I'm Paula Houston um, here for Hair Brain Live. So I like to use my Halo. Um, I generally will do um, a, like a higher, lower airflow, higher heat. Depending on the guest, I may do like a medium heat. But you want to do a lower airflow when you're diffusing the hair. So this is a diffuser. It literally diffuses the air. The, the air. This is a chopstick. It looks like a magic wand because it is. Um, so basically, I tip my guest head. I use the, the chopstick to lift the hair and then the fingers of the diffuser to create that end result. The thing about curly hair when you're diffusing it, don't touch it. The more you touch it, the frizzier it's going to be in your end result. So once you put the product in, don't touch the hair. Use the chopstick. Doo -doo -doo. Use the chopstick to lift the hair and create that lift and then go in with your diffuser. Right? Because if I go in and touch it, it's going to create frizz. So I just use my chopstick. So and is that because your finger is abrasive? It's not. And I think also, generally speaking, most hairdressers are super heavy handed. Just <laughs> yeah. So it's like the more you rub and touch it when it's in that like semi wet, like to semi dry, dry state, it just gets frizzy. Like hair, curly hair naturally just wants to be frizzy. So those kinds of things are really important. So again, you can see like already she's like, she's getting all like squished up and that's fine. Like I can let her do that because once it's dry, I can touch it. But when it's wet, I don't want to touch it at all. So I'm using the chopstick. And I'm going to turn this up just because Amber told me, told me she likes high airflow. <laughs> so that'll just get it drier a little bit quickly so I can show you guys how to shake it out. So sometimes, and you can see because I'm diffusing it, like it looks a little crazy right now, but it's like very square, which if you're going for all my guard, it'll work for you. But if not, my whole target here is just to get her hair dry. So once I get that hair nice and dry, let's see how we're doing. Oh yeah, she's pretty dry. It's just a little section. So once it's dry, then I can go in and start touching it and shaping it. And if I want to touch it up like with a curling iron, I can do that. So then I can go in and I can just like shape her. I know it's kind of cheater because I just did like one little section of hair, but it, it'll give you like a little bit of a visual and it would be fun to do. Um, maybe we'll do a styling conversation at one point. Yeah, let's do that. Um, but this is like obviously basic bare bones. Um, and I would say that generally with the neuro lift, when you're styling curly hair, it's really great because it gives you a ton of, um, like control and definition, but it's also has the thermal protection in it, which is huge with any texture of hair, but especially with curly hair. Um, my texture personally is like fine. So it's pretty fragile. So I always want to make sure I have that little extra, um, help of having a thermal protectant, but you can see like pretty easily. Sometimes I'll dry my guests hundred percent. Sometimes I dry them about 80%. If they want any sort of like iron work afterwards, which like I like to use, um, this is my neuro small styling cone. So I actually like to use this a lot. It has the um, 3 8 inch tip, which is super cool because then I can go in like, depending on how small or how large their curls are, um, I can use different parts of the iron to create um, whatever end result I'm looking for. So like for example, if I just want to touch up one of the pieces and I want it to be really small, I can just wrap it around the smaller part of my iron and I got a little ringlet that matches her natural texture. Whereas if I want something that's a little bit bigger, and this is cool too, like sometimes if you have those curly haired guests that want um, like a bigger curl, but they still want to maintain like the bigness of their texture, you can go in with the big end and just go ahead and it'll give you like a little bit of a bigger ringlet. So you can see the difference there. So there's like the bigger ringlet um, and then here's like the little baby guy the smaller ringlet there. So that's just a little smidgen, just a little taste of what's possible when we're styling curly Instagram hair. Handle oh, time. yay. Okay. Thanks for reminding me. Yeah. Um, so my Instagram is hair by Paula Houston. So hair 
Paula Houston. Um, and yeah, if you guys have any questions for sure, I'll go through the comments here as well. Um, and if you guys want to reach out to me directly, um, I am on Facebook hair by Paula Houston is my page, but I would say Instagram is my social media drug of choice. So, um, if you want to come on play with me in Instagram, I would love to have you. So if you guys have any questions, send them my way. Otherwise, thank you so much. Thanks, Hair Rain. Thanks, Pivot Point, for these amazing, amazing mannequins. Mwah!